I'm going to kick off very quickly with, with Keith. Um, you know, you, you're probably one of the best qualified people talking about sort of integrating big energy to the grid, and, and, and so we'll kick off with that. Okay, thank, thanks very much for that, that introduction. Um, what I'm going to talk about really is looking at how we can integrate clean energy uh, through investment in infrastructure primarily. Uh, in order for the market to be able to provide the solution, one or two decisions need to be made up front about exactly what direction we're going in so that we can put the right infrastructure in place. Because unlike IT systems, which we can happily sort of roll over every few years, most of the infrastructure that we put in place will be there in 20, 30, or even 40 years' time. We've got an electricity industry that um, works. The UK should be proud of it in terms of its resilience, its um, efficiency, because the regulators have moved the goalposts and have, have stripped cost out gradually. However, that model doesn't work for the future when you look at the billions that have to be invested in the UK in new technology upgrades, standard replacement programs, and paying uh, utilities on the basis of only you know capacity and, and so forth. There's going to be no single solution. If anybody comes to you and says, I've got the answer, tell them to keep taking their happy pills. <laughs> this is a basket of technologies that is coming through that is going to enable distributed generation over the next 10 to 15 years to see a huge uptake. Now, obviously, fuel cell today, we kind of know a lot about fuel cells, right? And what, one thing I really do want to stamp on very hard right at the start is this myth, and it is a myth, that fuel cells is always 10 years away, yada, yada, yada. David, I think you, you've probably got some very interesting things to say about the built environment and, and, and how we integrate um, our buildings into, into and, and renewable energy from buildings and buildings generally. As far as the built environment is concerned, I think the single most important thing to recognise is that we've already built over 70% of the stock that we're going to have in 2050, notwithstanding Armageddon in the meantime, possibly. And demand reduction, rather than technology, is by far the cheapest, cleanest, safest way of actually trying to achieve substantial CO2 savings. Complex technologies in the built environment tend to fail. Simplicity tends to work. When you talk about any, any kind of clean energy, clean technology, smart grids, fuel cells, battery EVs, you name it, there are so many assumptions about what consumers would do under certain conditions that it, it's, it worries me because consumers in this place seem to be the other person, not me, the other person. The only thing that recently has made a massive difference to the outlook on investment has been the recession. And it's been the only thing that has been an effective uh, uh, measure for reducing carbon and reducing energy consumption that we've had over the last decades. The final thing I'd say is to drive the smart grid. We've had the announcement about smart metering. What we also need to do is to persuade Ofgem to actually change the metering, billing and settlement arrangements to make sure that dynamic load manipulation comes in and both the energy suppliers and the consumers are incentivized to make it work and happen. The smart grid isn't a whole set of new products waiting to happen. It's actually an evolution. And one of the things we have to do in order to make it, make it real is, is understand the gap that's growing gap between perception and reality. Lots of challenges, I think, as far as integrating clean energy, um, whether it be to the grid, whether it be just, just on a localized level, lots of challenges. And, um, it would be interesting to come back in, in sort of four or five years' time and see where we stand and if things have changed. Thank you all very much.